What is up everybody? In this video, we're covering a lot of things. This video mostly relates to Prag 2 for EEE 3096. But if you found your way to this video anyway, I hope you learned something. So let's just go ahead and dive straight into the video. This is some general terminology you should know. A toolchain is a set of tools to aid development. It typically contains a debugger and compiler for particular languages and instruction set architectures. A compiler takes human-readable code and turns it into machine-readable code. That's a really simplified definition, but it works for our purposes. Flags are options passed to the compiler and are generally language and hardware dependent. A quick note on C and C++ compilers. First, your source files are compiled into object files. Object files are then linked together into a binary, and binaries are what we execute on the architecture that they were compiled for. Now that we've got introductions out the way, let's get down to business. This is Make. It's a program that's used to help automate the compilation and build process. Compiling can get pretty complicated pretty quickly, and Make is a way that can help simplify it. CMake exists as a more advanced, feature-rich version of Make, which is meant to be used for cross-compilation. Being feature-rich makes it more complicated, so we're not going to talk about it now. In order to create a make file, you need to create a file called makefile in the root directory of your project, as follows. And if we open it up, we can see that this is the makefile for Prac2. Let's work through it line by line. Make files have tabs as a part of their syntax. I don't like using tabs in my code, so this first line allows us to use spaces instead. Next, we define the compiler that we're going to use. We're using the compiler that's specific to the Raspberry Pi. We're using the C++ compiler that makes use of hardware floating point. Even though our source code is written in C, one of the libraries we use is written in C++, so we just use a mix of the two. Next up, we have our compiler flags. We've included the maths library and the real-time library as a default. As you work through Prac2, you'll have to change this section a little bit. Then, we have links to our custom libraries. Tools is where we're keeping our timing library. Next up, we just have some folder definitions. This helps neaten our code. And now, it's onto the rules. The default rule is run when we call make, and we can see that three things happen. We compile the prac2 source, we compile the timing library, and then we link them into a binary which we can execute. The next rule is a similar rule for the multi-threaded implementation of the practical. It's pretty similar to the default rule, but you can see that we've included the pthreads library as well. This library is what enables multi-threading. Then we have a run rule, which runs our code. And we also have a run threaded version, which runs the threaded implementation. Then we also have a make clean rule, which is, I'm sure, something you've had an angry guardian shout at you. But in this context, it's a rule that cleans out compiled files. This is useful if we move over to another compiler or architecture and need to recompile the libraries and binaries. Because remember, each compiler works for a particular architecture. We can't run code compiled for the Raspberry Pi on our desktop PCs, for example. Next, let's talk about software acceleration. Compilers are written by really smart people who really know how to optimize code. And now code is writing better compilers to better optimize that code. As a result of these available optimizations, there's some useful compiler flags that you can use to try to speed up your code. They're available in the Prac manual, but here they are on screen too. Be aware when using some of them as they may affect your results. We can also use specialized hardware on the CPU to increase performance. ARM CPUs have a bunch of different instruction sets that enable hardware level floating point optimizations. Try running through these and see what you get in terms of speed up. The final optimization you're going to make for this practical is multi-threading. Note that more threads doesn't always equate to more performance, as there's overhead associated with creating and merging threads. Anyway guys, that's it for now. I've left a link to my Patreon in the description down below. I'd really appreciate it if you checked it out. Stay well, and cheers for now.